How we doing? Fox back again. Um, as you can see, I've got Vengeance Producer Suite, Avenger, open. I was lucky enough to get an NFR copy off the guys over at uh, Vengeance, so I can do some sound design tutorials, do more stuff, and show you people what it can do. Um, I was going to do an overview or a review, but I've been checking YouTube. I've came onto this quite late. Um, there's plenty out there, loads of basic overviews, and a few more in-depth ones showing you all the features and functions. So rather than that, um, I'm going to go ahead and just start making some sounds with it. I'm going to make one of my uh, trademark pads, if you like, my LFO pad. Um, I've got it here with Silent. This is a sound I've made with many different synths. Um, I like to do it to compare the differences between them. This is it inside Silent. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to make that inside Avenger. Um, this is the website quickly. Just type in Vengeance or VPS Avenger. It gets you to the website. They're doing some good deals at the minute. There's a Christmas discount still on. You get 20% off everything. So it's 175 quid. Well, well worth the money. Um, I really, really do like this. I'm not just saying that because I got it from the, the, the blokes over at Vengeance. It is absolutely awesome. Um, we're going to touch on some of the routing options when I show you how to make this pad. But yeah, for uh, other in-depth tutorials, there's plenty out there. But I'm going to do what I do. Go ahead and do a tutorial showing you how to make this sound with this. Uh, I'm not going to copy it exactly. I'm going to lean towards uh, VPS's strong points and make it even better than the silent one. Very, very easy. Um, yeah, we're going to do some creative routing with a filter envelope, and then we're going to use a filter envelope to control a modulation amount, which is very, very neat and very cool. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead. The initial patch, um, quite annoyingly, comes with a reverb and a delay on, so I'm just going to turn those off, actually. Uh, they're on the send rack. So that's what it sounds like straight out of the box, just your basic saw wave. This patch is a brilliant one to make in other synths um, because it just uses the basic waveforms. So we're going to change the number of voices to seven on this one. We're going to bring the mix in so you can hear them all full. Pull the detune down. The pan is like the stereo effect of these new voices. The uh, amp envelope needs quite a middle in attack. Uh, full sustain obviously so that the attack can uh, take its toll uh, a tiny bit of a release the way you can change the slope on these envelopes you see that little blue arc there that's like showing you like the curve of the slope if you like if you right click on it drag it you can change the curve to a positive exponential linear uh, or anything in between if you're dead linear you won't see any blue at all so yeah we want it pretty Just a tiny bit of a tail off, nothing too drastic. Just it's going to help mix nice with the reverb and the delays later on. So yeah, we're going to pitch this one up two octaves. We're going to create another oscillator. It's going to be virtually identical. We're going to have seven voices again. We're going to mix on full, detune around about 40%, pan on full, this one is going to be pitched up just one octave. The This um, bar at the bottom shows you what you're modulating, so we're oscillator 2 transpose plus 12. When I first turned this on I was uh, looking at the top for some reason in this bar up here for it to show me the, the numbers and stuff but it doesn't, it shows you in the bottom. So we need to So oscillator one is down two octave, uh, plus two octaves. Oscillator two is just plus one. Same amount of voices, same amount of spread. Nothing too crazy. This automatically goes to amp one. Um, if you want to solo or mute different parts, you can just hover over the oscillators so we can solo that. Or solo that. Or solo that. 
Maybe a little more detune on both. Good place to start. We're then going to create another oscillator. You can have up to eight different oscillators. You just keep pressing the plus knob and it brings another one in. We're going to use a square wave on this one. This one is going to stay on transpose zero, so the, the root note that it starts on originally. We're going to have just four voices unison for this one. The mix on full again. Detune roughly the same. Stereo on full again. Just watch for clipping. Just increase the volume of that ever so slightly. Starting to build a real good base for the sound now. Um, we're then going to have uh, a sine wave as the last oscillator. I'm just going to use four oscillators. So this one is going to be a sine wave. I'm going to pitch this one down one octave. So minus 12. Increase the volume. I'm going to have two voices of unison on this. No detune, just to make it louder. So that's real creating sort of the, uh, the bassy part of the sound. So we're going to have um, two separate filters. We're going to have oscillator one, two, and three all going to filter one. Um, by default, it will automatically route everything to filter one if the, if a filter is turned on. You can see in this box here, this shows you the routing. Um, if you want to bring in another filter again, just click in this box, you can have up to four. We're going to route oscillator four to filter two. We need to bring it into this box here. Plus filter two, filter two. So oscillator three, two, and one are all going to filter one, which we are going to control with an envelope. So we're going to start off these three, cut off, wants to be quite low what we at 110 hertz so just above sub range we need to turn the filter on which is something I wasn't quite aware of filter one So about 110 hertz, 120 hertz. So it starts real low. This is the envelope destination amount. Your filter envelope is automatically below it. So we're going to open it up, not all the way, probably to about 70%. We want the sustain on full, no decay, and the attack time is going to tell us how long it's going to do that. And we want it. Gonna make the release a bit more linear. Filter two, we're gonna start a lot higher, even though this is a subby sort of subby sort of sound. Let's solo this oscillator. So this one wants to be a 24 dB filter one. And we'll change it to a low pass analog 24 dB. You can hear it's a real low sound. 
tell you what, we'll have all of them going into filter one because there's not much difference in the envelopes I was going to use, so we'll delete that for now. Unmute those. Unsolo that. That sounded really good for the minute. Um, yeah, we might as well do the effects and then I'll put the uh, LFO on at the end because there's some quite creative route in there. So it definitely wants a chorus. We're going to put everything on the master effects. So we'll delete, we'll change this to the chorus, the vintage chorus. Just boost the rate of the LFO, swishing the delays around. You've got four delay lines on this. It's quite a rich chorus. Some Most choruses only have two. There's one in the virus where you can have up to six delay lines, three per stereo side, so three per left, three for right. This has got four. It's a very, very powerful. You watch if we crank the mix. It's really creamy. You want it about 50% on the mix. We want the chorus then going into a delay. Um, you just right click one of these modules and then left click what you want to bring in. So the delay we want on 1 over 4 triplets. So 1 over 4 triplet. Um, we're just going to filter out anything below 100 hertz, so we're not going to be re delaying the sub. It's really handy having these filters. Most of these effects have like a built in filter, so you can sort of aim where you want the delay to be. Inside Ableton, you've got the ping pong delay, you've got that little filter that you can scoop and then move around. It, it's the same thing, really. We want the delay then going into a reverb, so we're going to right click it, we're going to use the V-verb. This was the best one that I found for this sort of sound. Um, it was quite a big reverb in regards to size at about 7. You can sync the pre-delay to a clock, which is something that I've only ever seen in the Voris TI. Um, it's an absolutely brilliant idea, you can set it to like a quarter note. One. What? You could set it to like a quarter note. Same again. Filter out anything below sort of hundred hertz. It's a huge reverb, this V-verb. I really, really love it. I mean, we haven't even got that big a decay, really. It's only, let's bring it down to around about three seconds. Mixes beautifully with the reverb. We're then going to add a compression on, compressor on, which is in the dynamic section. The compressor, we are going to have a ratio of 4 over 1 or 1 over 4, whichever way you want to look at it. We're going to have attack time of very, very snappy. A release time of about 140 milliseconds, something like that. Bring the threshold down. So that's enough for effects now. I mean, we could go on. We could have some distortion. Um, 
phaser some multi mods and stuff like that there's plenty of effects to choose from and they are really really good quality now we're going to really make this patch shine and shimmer just by simply adding an lfo to the cutoff of the filter and then doing some creative modulation with that so we're going to use lfo one it's drag and drop so click on the label of the modulator that you want to use we're going to drag it drop it onto the cutoff of filter one that automatically puts uh, a mod assignment into the mod matrix which is here so as you can see we go back to LFO 1 change the shape to a triangle there isn't that many LFO shapes which I was quite upset about um, I'm going to look into more detail about the envelopes and whether there's some multi-stage envelopes and stuff you can add on I'm sure there is After touch, there's a mixer page as well, which again I haven't looked too much into. I just done what I normally do and dived straight in and started uh, making some patches. So yeah, we want a triangle anyway, which is this one. <laughs> That's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be starting the LFO rate off fast. And we're going to use the same filter envelope that we've got modulating the filter to modulate the LFO rate. So to do that, we're going to drag this filter one envelope, drag it onto the LFO rate. That again puts it in the mod matrix. You then need to assign the amount you want. I mean, you can. I thought there was a way you could uh, modulate the rings around the edge already, but maybe I'm missing something. Increase the volume of the sub oscillator. Right, now that's really, really abrupt at the minute how the LFO's cracking, bouncing, even though it's a triangle, which is the most smoothest way of modulating anything. Um, a really really neat trick is if we pull this is the LFO destination amount for the LFO modulating the cutoff if we pull that down to zero obviously you're gonna hear nothing if we then use the filter envelope to bring the modulation um, uh, destination amount in it's gonna slowly increase how much that LFO is modulating the cutoff over time. So if we drag that, drop it onto the destination amount for the LFO one control in the filter one cutoff, which is there. Now, you can see how much smoother it is. Uh, Push the rate up a tiny bit. Turn the mix down on the delay send a bit. And the verb. Whew. 
what a fucking machine. Uh, we've only just scratched on what you can do with this. Being able to modulate a destination amount is something that I'll, I'll push for whenever I'm doing work with companies on building synths. It really does enable you to have some real fluid modulation by modulating the amount of modulation on another thing. <laughs> Knob, slider, button, whatever. So yeah, here's some modems. You can you can introduce different mod envelopes here. Um, if you wanted to use this rather than a filter envelope, you could control in a lot more detail how you wanted the LFO the uh, envelope to control things. You could in, you can insert as many points as you want, create some crazy shapes. You can then sync it to the clock quarter notes or triplets change the speed change it from a one shot sustain you can get it to loop um i'm going to be going over this when i make some growls and stuff later on you can make some crazy shapes uh and then get it to modulate sort of the wavetable select and stuff when you're making growls and stuff so yeah you then got pitch envelopes which you can add and assign to different pitch. You, you see up here in your routing option, you can have different pitch envelopes for different oscillators. You got step sequences. You got a mixer. You got different zones where you can key map different samples to different areas of the keyboard. You've got some global tuning options and global transpose options and anything you could ever think of. An arpeggiator, a drum sequencer, a full editor. I believe this is the partials so you've got seventh again i'll have to look into that in more detail but yeah what a sound let's compare it to the silent one maybe i've got the the destination amount for the LFO too high again. Yeah, very close. Uh, vengeance wins in my eyes. It wasn't going to be a comparison. I was just going to make this patch that I always make for Sims to show you some of the things that you can do with this. So yeah, as always, please stay tuned. Many more tutorials of this uh, Avenger VPS Vengeance Producer Suite. I'm going to be using this a lot, so stay tuned. Um, please subscribe. Check me out. Facebook, Google+, Twitter. All links in the description. Yeah, cheers.